Hey guys, how's it going? Back at it once again with a brand new video for you, and welcome to another episode of our Forza Motorsport 6 Let's Play. Last time I recorded, we got to round three of the European Tour in the last series in the Sports Icons Division. Um, and after a whole heap of overtaking challenges, let's continue on as we head to Hockenheim. It's funny, like, given the point the game makes to try and balance the fuel at every given opportunity, I don't know why it insists on making your car illegal for certain categories. Don't get that. Uh, let's have a look here. No collision's a bit too OP. Let's go the 60% more affinity. Yeah, we'll go with that. I like BMW. Right, let's go. I must admit, I'm going on this race now. You know what? I've, that's really grown on me by, by playing these races. One, the Audi RS7 looks fantastic, I must say. I got one for free, obviously, but by being a part of the getting the four to tenth anniversary DLC, that, that was one of the cars involved. Whoa, little nudge there on the RS6. But also, like the Cad the Cadillac CTSV looks really nice. I actually used it quite a fair bit online for the league last week for executive heavyweights, and actually, actually, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, me driving a Cadillac, and not the limo either, like all the other YouTubers are doing. It's amazing. Good affords it. Is that an E63? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a short track of Hockenheim. Okay. Oh, lordy. Ow. That wasn't the plan. Very easy to get your breaking points wrong in this game. Very, very easy. Again, like 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 a lot of the cars in this game, like this M6 is already growing on me as well. It's ridiculous. Like, like this game, when it comes to race, some of the racing cars in this game aren't that great. Um, for example, Forza should not make, they should not put open wheel cars in their games from now on. Like, I must admit, I'm a bit frust frustrated um, because some some of the open wheel cars aren't that great. I don't think they understand how much more grip an open wheeler should have over other cars. <laughs> like, for some reason, the, the the brand new MP4 they put in the game, which is you know Ayrton Senna's 1988 F1 car, one of the one of the greatest F1 cars of all time, it's too fast. Like, it is literally OP. Like, its stats are ridiculous, even though it shouldn't really be beating the current Lotus E23, which is also in the game around there, and one of my least favourite cars in the game, ironically speaking, as well. Whoa. Like... It shouldn't be beating modern F1 cars, statistically. Because stats-wise, the MP4 has got like 10 for accelerating, handling, and braking. And, like, the Lotus C23 is 9.8. How is that a thing? <laughs> that is nonsense. The open wheelers in this game aren't great. That's, like, one of my biggest drawbacks against the entire game. And it's, it's not a massive one, because there's only about three or four open wheelers in the game anyway. The indie cars, I think, for example, are great. So, it's not all bad news. Like, I love the indie cars in this game. I think they're fantastic. Far more enjoyable to drive and rewarding to drive than the Lotus C23, which is never a good thing either. But, you know. It's one of those things. Also, I know people have, have drawn my attention to this, and I've spoken about it on Twitter a lot recently, but um, the game has brought back its, its token microtransaction system, which I'm very, very disappointed with, with Turn 10. Now... Turn 10 got enough controversy and enough criticism when Forza 5 came out as, a, as an Xbox One launch title a couple of years ago 
when they basically realized that the economy for the game is complete garbage and that they had microtransactions there to make you buy the best cars. And that, you know, the most expensive car in the game, which was ironically the Lotus E21 from two years ago, how that car, um, you know, w would cost like 60 quid to buy with tokens, which basically made it completely broken and more expensive than the game itself. Completely stupid. Like, why would you ever do that? So, they've brought it back in Forza 6. It's the same system that's been in Forza 5 and Horizon 2. And I'm disappointed because I don't believe in microtransactions in AAA games. We've already paid £60 for your game. We've already paid like 50 quid for your game, or $60 in some cases. And it's, it's worse for us Brits because it's because the economy for, for Britain is, is better than America. So we end up paying more for our games. In America, it's 60 bucks. In the UK, it's 50 quid, which works out at about $80. So we lose out on the conversion in the first place. Then we got to pay more over again for tokens to buy cars. It's not like the game is generous enough. So, you, know, you don't really need it in that instance. Because think about it. The in-game economy is better, but you've got to pay to be a VIP. So you get double credits on races. So not everybody's going to have that luxury of being VIPs in this game. So it's going to be even harder to get credits and grind up to get, you know, you know the better cars in the game. Which, you know, are 1.5 to 2 million credits. And, you know, what's even more sneaky about it? They've added an extra token. Um, onto the end of the really expensive cars, like if a car's worth over a million credits. I'll give you an example. A token is worth 500 credits, right? So, that means mathematically that the best cars in the game that are worth 2 million are going to cost 4,000 tokens, right? No, it costs 4,001. And you know what? Why, why that's very sneaky of turn 10? You know why? Because the extra token means you're not going to have a nice round number to buy credits with. It'll force you to buy more if you're that way inclined, because you'll have some weird number like maybe 3,392 and not like 3,400, which is a nice round figure, like the nice round figures that the cars are worth in the game. It's sneaky, it's terrible, and I hate the fact they've brought tokens back. Completely unnecessary. It's, it's, it's greed. It's, it's, it's top-tier developer greed at its finest, and I just, I just can't stand it. There is no need for microtransactions in AAA games. I don't think there should be microtransactions in games, period, because it puts other players at an unfair advantage. Not everyone's going to have the best cars. Not everyone's going to have the money to be able to go out and race online in certain categories because of the nature of the game itself, and you're giving people an unfair advantage by having access to more cars and more credits to be able to race online with. I think it's nonsense. And you know what? It's a worse system than, turn than Forza 4. Do you remember Forza 4 when they had car tokens? Like, you could get any car in the game for three tokens. And I think like 12... You, you think you could get 12 for like six quid. That would get... No car in the game was worth more than three tokens. So, you could get four of any car you wanted for 800 points. Sure, it was still a microtransaction, and I still don't like them. But it was much more fair, and I say a fair bit more valuable than what we've got now with Turn 10, which I think is a much worse and uh, far more exploitative system. Like I said, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed at the, the, the whole thing because I don't think Turn 10 needed to do it. And I thought I, I, I liked the fact they got rid of them for this game, but um, on the whole, disappointing. But yeah, we could simply take the win. 26,000 credits and 8,800 XP. And then another 14,080 affinity level. So I'm up to 17 now. I, 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 okay. In case you guys didn't know, I've got the BMW V12 LMR as well in, in my garage, which I won off, off a prize wheel when I really like it. I did a couple of Le Mans with it. It was, quite, it was kind of fun. So that's three down and uh, three to go as we head up next to the Bernese Alps. Okay, we've got, we've got the pristine cornering mod on for this one as well, so. It's hard to believe this car's now got 645 horsepower post mod. Like, you know what's kind of crazy in the car industry these days? That all these saloons and big manufacturers are now trying to get more and more power into their cars. Like, like I said, this car's got 645 horsepower in this current trim, yeah? 
Remember 10 years ago when you had the Porsche Carrera GT, the Mercedes SLR, and the Ferrari Enzo? Three cars at the absolute pinnacle of the industry. They all had like 600 to 650 horsepower. Crazy, isn't it, how you can, how you can get that in a 100 grand saloon? As opposed to a 350,000 pound hypercar. It's amazing, huh? And now we're getting these hybrids of 900 and 950 in the case of the FXX. And if you even go one further to the prototype FXXK, um, as opposed to the LaFerrari, it's got 1,050 horsepower. 1,050! Crazy amounts of power. Like the McLaren P1 GTRs like that as well. It's just insane power and technology in these cars. I, I never cease to be amazed at it because I've... For example, I've watched Top Gear since its, since its very first series. And, um... I've seen how cars are, are developed and I've, I've had, I've had, a, I've had a, an eye on it. And I've, I've overwatched as cars have gotten more and more powerful, more and more innovative, more and more technologically advanced. And it's crazy how, like I said, we've gone from, like, saloons having 300 horsepower to saloons having 600 horsepower. And, and the, the needle keeps getting moving. Remember, look, look at a couple of episodes ago where I was talking about the C63 Black Series, and that's, that's got 510 horsepower. Like, an M3-style kind of coupe that has 500 horsepower. 500! <coughs> it's crazy! It's, it, it is ridiculous how that, how that just keeps turning out, and, you know, that's, that's technology for you, and I never cease to be amazed by it, and... It's why I've often said in Formula 1 we should keep it a, a, a tech-first sport because the, the tech we're seeing now, you're going to see in cars on the road in 10 years' time. You're going you're gonna to have manufacturers keeping, keeping the incentives to keep, to keep trying to push the needle that much further. It's, it's really impressive to see. And, um, you know, stuff like the, you know, the E-diffs, like differentials that used to be on a Schumacher's F1 car ended up on a, ended up on a Ferrari 430. It's little things like that which keep moving the needle forward, and I, I, that's awesome. I really, I really like seeing that happen. I wish, I wish it happened more often, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, hybrids are now, you know, becoming... Oh, God, that's a big crash. Like, hybrids are now becoming the thing. It really is. Like, oh, I'd love to see where, you know, where we go next from hybrids because we're seeing now cars with 900 horsepower and it's not that big a deal. Like, the Porsche is the weakest of the three. The Porsche 918. Uh, but, like, the Porsche 918 has got, like, 885 horsepower and it's, like, the least powerful of the three. The P1's got 905 and then the Lafari's got 950. Even though, in this game, for some reason, the P1's top speed is like a million miles higher than the LaFerrari's. Like, the LaFerrari can't get to like 220. The P1 can go 245 miles an hour in this game, and I don't believe it can get that high. It's not a Koenigsegg. <laughs> it's not the Hennessy Venom. I don't get why that's a thing, but whatever. I wonder how much of them the Dayton McLaren gave away. Also, looking forward to the Porsche expansion coming out next year. It's not been confirmed, but that's what tends to happen in these games. Like, Microsoft did get the license for Porsche in their games off of EA, because, you know, Porsche work with EA almost exclusively. You've got, you've got to buy extra permission from EA to get their cars in their games. But I really hope the 918 gets put in the game, and I really hope the Porsche 919 Le Mans prototype also gets in, because I really, I, like, I love the Le Mans prototypes in this game. I've said it before, I'm collecting them right now because they're, they're just so much fun. In case you didn't see it already in the, in the DLC, the GTR Nismo from this year's Le Mans from Nissan is in the game, and it's really awesome. Like, it's, like looks-wise, it's probably the cleanest-looking Le Mans car of the lot. Whoa, wait, wait, why there again? I'm drifting in an M6. <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah, I really hope the 919 gets in there because, like, Forza love their LMPs, and that, that's, like, probably the best Class 4 racing in this game is the LMPs because of how many they are, the variety and the different styles of how they are. Like, you got the Mazda, which came in as DLC, which isn't the fastest, but it's got the best handling of any LMP car that's out there with a 9.1 handling rating. And then you got the 787, which is a lot more of a brute, a lot more powerful one to, to, to stick the restrictors off. My personal favourite is the Rebellion, the Toyota Lola. It is amazing. Like, like you can take the restrictors off and you can keep it in the P-Class at 993, like as a performance index rating, and it is just so good. It's got the power and its handling is so amazing. It, it handles like it's on rails. It's insane. So, you know, I, I hope to see more in the game. I'd love to see the, the Toyota TS-040 in there. This is Toyota, and I'd love to see the Porsche in there too, because they're both amazing. I, I, I love that Forza loves its LMPs, because they, they, they keep bringing them back, and I, I, I love them for that. Like, all these old Audis in there, like the old Audi R8, so, which is fantastic as well. All just, all just great stuff. Like, something I've noticed with, with, with the extended time of playing this game is that, on the whole... The car, the, the, the choices of cars are fantastic. There is literally something for everyone. It's not like in Gran Turismo where you may have like a thousand cars, but most of them are the GT4 rendered standard cars, and there's 17 versions of the same skyline. It's not like that in this case. They're, like, the, the rosters are smaller, but they all look fantastic, and they all have an amazing level of detail, and there is something for everybody, for the open wheelers out there to the LMP fans, to the GT3 fans out there, to the classic racers. I mean, the amount of classic racing cars in the game is, is, is friggin' phenomenal. Cars from, like, even before the Grand Prix, like, like, like pre-F1 era cars, like, cars in the 1930s and things like that. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. And the detail is fantastic. But yeah, there we go. We take another win. So that's that out of the way. Another one down. Next up, Silverstone. Okie doke. So, Silverstone. Did I get a single credit for, for Pristine Corner? I don't think I did. I was actually quite sloppy because I was talking so much in that last one. Sorry. Um, let's, get, let's go for the 2000 driver level XP. That'll do nicely. Right. Silverstone. Bash 2015. Am I missing something in that RS7 livery? Oh god, there's a Bentley GT in this series. <laughs> then again, I mocked the Continental GT, but, the, but that Blancpain GT3 Bentley Continental is fantastic. But it's 600k. And that frustrates me because, like, it, it, it annoys me because, like, when it comes to the GT3 class of racing in this game, I just, I love the GT3s. It's the DBR9, and then it's everything else because the DBR is the best. The DBR9 is the best handling of the cars in that class by a country mile, and it's not even close. Also, kind of distracted because like people keep like there's a lot of tweets going around right now. Like basically, I think it was a couple of peers of mine, Ryan King and uh, Tom Martinez, tweeting each other about Nico Rosberg. Sigh. I get bored of talking about the, the Hamilton Rosberg dynamic because it's just, you know, people like, like, people, especially the media, keep buying other people's stories when it comes to this. And I've talked about it before in other videos and other written content I've done on the website. It's annoying. Like, it's a waste of time. We all know Hamilton's better than Rosberg. And that's not really being up for debate. It's, it's, the, it's the sub stories that's the annoying thing about it. Like, 
oh, you know, Hamilton's trying to get in Rosberg's head, or Rosberg's trying to play the mental game, or yada, 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 you know, oh, Hamilton was faster, just a dirty air screen, but shit, shut up, okay? I get it, you're trying to make a story out of nothing, so that's what the media does sometimes, sometimes there is no story worth telling, but these guys have got to make their paychecks and people will click on their links, so, you know. It's, 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 the, it's the entity that we drive in. Because, you know, when it comes to the media, like often in the football industry, if you can't come up with a decent story, make one up. Like, whoa. Bit late on the brakes there. Because, you know, you always hear those gossip pages on columns like, oh, Ross Barkley going to Man City for £50 million. And I'm like, yeah, right. Like, if, like, if it makes just a small shred of common sense, they'll run it. It's like when people said at Japan that Rosberg lacked the mental fortitude or lacked the killer instinct to make a pass at Japan. And it's like, so tell me, what is this mental game that Rosberg's lacking? Like, how do you get into the mindset of a world champion F1 driver, whatever the hell that actually is? I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a body language expert. I'm not going to pretend like I am just to, just to tell a story. It's bullshit. I've been ranting a lot in this episode. Good lord. Which reminds me, I've got, I've got one more thing to rant about. Also, I know people have been talking about the lack of videos on my channel. Again, I apologise. It's not an ideal situation. I, I, I get that. I'm making two videos a week for Race World TV now. A gaming top five and a racing game top five. So... Naturally making two videos a week over there and then whatever else I've got here is difficult. It's difficult to juggle everything. And also they've offered me a part-time job as a video curator on their network, which would be really fantastic. The problem with that though is, is that I have to be a partner with them as a network and I have to break off from Machinima, who are my current partners, my, my, my current network partners, and they are trash. So, you know, Machinima are awful. They died in terms of creative content years ago, really. Like, inside, losing Inside Gaming was kind of the last straw for them now that they've got um, Funhouse over there now, a Rooster Teeth instead, and they're bloody biting up Screw Attack and all because they're all coming together under full screen who own Rooster Teeth, so. Yada, yada, yada. Gaming politics, uh, whatever, but, you know, Machinima are terrible. And, you know, they, they will do anything not to let somebody go from their note because it's, 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 it's easy money for them, even if the, the money isn't very much at all. So, you know, trying to break off from them as a network while at the same time just, uh, just trying to get out of it is really annoying. And it's really stressful. So many back and forth emails with, with Race World and then Machinima and then trying to find a way to crack the code, so to speak, is it's, it's, it's frustrating, man. It really is. It's, it's really, really frustrating. I'm just doing what I can to try and make it work, but at the minute, it ain't happening. And it's frustrating, because, you know, I would like to get 10 hours a week work guaranteed, because it's, you know, it's, it's good pay. For those of you who don't know, I work in a Matterland part-time. I work four to eight hours a week, depending on, on, on what, how that goes, and I've never had a full-time job never in, in, while doing this and while it's nice to keep doing this as a passion I would like some money on the side and if I could do that doing what I love doing then that's a great bonus you know but there you go I'm just getting everything off my chest today for some reason I have no idea why it must be Monday morning it's that Monday morning feeling that's doing this clearly well, this is the day I record this, anyway. Ugh. I'm not normally this... I'm not normally this negative a person. I'm not normally a very happy person, but... Shit gets you down sometimes. It really does. But there you go. Second place. That'll do. Guy in the Evil's just too far out in front. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Oh, we level up. Nice. Level 79. Let's spin. It's just, it's, just an, it's just another cash roll. Let's see what we get here. 100k. That's, that's, that's alright. 
and another 6,800 for getting to BMW level 18. Oh, we've got another showcase, a track day shootout at Le Mans. Okay. Shall we do it? I think we shall. <laughs> 